This is part 55 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll understand the problem of global namespace pollution in JavaScript with an example. When working with JavaScript in large projects during your code review, you might hear senior developers saying this JavaScript code causes the global scope to be polluted. Let's understand what we mean by global namespace pollution in this video and in our next video we'll discuss how to write JavaScript code in such a way that it does not cause global namespace pollution. Let's say we have two teams, team A and team B, working on a large project. Whatever functions team A develops, they add their functions to this JavaScript file, team A.js. Similarly, team B add their functions to team B.js file. Now let's go ahead and add two JavaScript files to our project. So add a new item. We want to add a JScript file and let's call this team A.js. And similarly, let's add another JavaScript file and let's name this team B.js. Now let's say team A has created a customer function and this function is going to have two parameters, first name and last name. So this is going to be our customer constructor function which will construct a customer object for us. And we want the customer object to have two properties, uh, first name and we want to initialize that with the parameter that is being passed to this constructor function. So this dot last name equals last name parameter and we also want to have a function in this customer constructor function which is going to return us the full name of the customer. So this dot get full name is going to be the function. And all we want this function to do is return the first name by concatenating that to a single space and concatenating that in turn to last name. So here we have got a very simple customer constructor function that has two parameters and get full name is going to give us the full name of the customer. Now let's say team B has also developed a function and they ended up giving that function the same name that is customer. But what these guys have done is they've included three parameters instead of two. So middle name, first name, middle name and last name. And let's have middle name property and let's initialize that with the parameter that is passed to the function. And this get full name is going to append first name to space and that in turn will be appended to middle name. That appended to space and to that we append the last name. So at the moment we've got two customer functions, two functions with the same name. One customer function takes two parameters, the other one takes three parameters. Now on this HTML page, let's include the HTML, let's include the head section with an HTML and let's include a script section and let's reference team a.js file and let's also reference team b.js. Within the body section, let's include a div element. Let's give it an ID. Let's actually call this result div. And let's include another script section in the body section. document.get element by ID. Let's get the ID of the div element, which is result div. And let's set the inner HTML of this div to, let's create an instance of the customer object. Now we have two customer functions. One has two parameters and the other one has three parameters. Now our intention here is to actually use the customer constructor function which has two parameters because we are just going to pass first name and last name. So I'm going to pass the first name as Tom and last name as Grover and the customer object has got get full name method so let's call that to return us the full name of the customer. 
okay so when we run this we expect it to print the customer full name within the div element that is Tom Grover so let's go ahead save these changes and reload the page now look at this we get Tom Grover undefined why is that that's basically because Kia this customer function is actually calling the one that has three parameters not the one which has two parameters why is that because if you look at our code here notice that we are referencing both the script files and our intention here is to actually use the customer function which has two parameters because tma.js you know the script file that we referenced here has got that function with two parameters so why is it not able to use that that's because in JavaScript we don't have the concept of function overloading you cannot have two functions in the same namespace now what is happening here is you know when team a dot js script file is loaded you know this customer function this gets added to the global scope in JavaScript the global object is the vendor object okay so to that global namespace the customer function will be added with two parameters and then after that team b.js file is loaded and if you look at team b.js this also has got customer function but with three parameters so now if you declare two functions with the same name in the same scope then the function that you have defined later which in this case is customer function with three parameters this one is going to overwrite the one that we have added earlier because in the same global namespace you cannot have two functions or two variables with the same name it's going to cause name collision that's why one will overwrite the other because in JavaScript we don't have the concept of function overloading so here we have already polluted the global scope now you may be wondering why didn't it happen the other way around why didn't the customer constructor function with two parameters override the customer constructor function with three parameters that depends on the order in which the scripts are loaded now if I load team B first and then team A next then you know the one with two parameters will override the one with three parameters okay depending on the order in which the script files are loaded you know the respective function which is loaded earlier that will be overwritten by the one which is loaded later okay so let's actually look at this in action so if you go to this browser window so at the moment I'm using Google Chrome now when I press F12 this will launch the developer tools in Google Chrome and then here we have the console window so within the console window the global you know we know that in JavaScript the global object is window object so when I say window dot we can actually see the customer function and look at this when I press enter it only knows about the customer function which has three parameters okay now actually you can actually see what are all the keys that are present within the global object you know when I type keys of vendor notice that these are all the keys that are already present in the global scope top vendor location etc and within that global scope we also have this customer function okay so we only have the customer function which has three parameters right now let's actually go back and reverse the order in which the scripts are loaded so I'm going to take this one and you know paste it on the top so team B is loaded first and team A is loaded next team B or J is you know what is that going to do that's going to first load the customer constructor function with three parameters and that function will be added to the global scope right so at the moment you know the browser will know about that function okay but immediately we are loading team A or J S as well and here we are adding the customer function to the same scope so what is this going to do it's going to override the one which is added earlier so the browser will know only about customer function which has two 
parameters. So let's save these changes in the HTML page. So we're loading team B first and then team A. And team A has the customer function with two parameters. So now let's reload this page. Now first of all notice that it works as expected. It's calling the customer function which has two parameters. Now if we go to keys of vendor so it knows about the customer object now when we say vendor dot customer look at that now it knows about the customer function which has two parameters okay so in JavaScript when you define a variable or a function with the same name you know it does not raise errors like C sharp or Java you know it simply overwrites the one that you have created earlier So polluting global namespace causes name collision. This is especially true in large projects where uh, you know you may be using several JavaScript libraries that are developed both internally as well as third-party libraries. That's why it's very important not to add everything to the global namespace. If someone else uses the same variable or function name, it can lead to name collision. In our next video, we'll discuss how to write JavaScript code in such a way that it does not cause global namespace pollution. Thank you for listening and have a great day.